Okay, now let's discuss the uh, second partial exam. First problem, we're looking for the distance and the midpoint between two points, negative six, negative three, and one, negative three. The distance is equal to square root of x2 minus x1 square plus y2 minus y1 square. Okay, so let's check. x2, assume this is x2. It doesn't matter which one is x2, x1. This is x2. It's a 1 minus negative 6 square. Negative 3 minus negative 3 square. 1 minus negative 6 is 1 plus 6. It's a 7, 7 square. Negative 3 minus negative 3, 0. Negative 3 minus negative 3, 0. Or negative 3 minus negative 3 is negative 3 plus 3. It's so still 0. So square root of 49 is 7. So the distance is 7. And midpoint, midpoint is x1 plus x2 over 2. y coordinate is y1 plus y2 over 2. x1, negative 6. x2, 1 over 2. Y1, negative 3. Y2, negative 3 over 2. So it's a negative 5 over 2. It's a negative 6 over 2. So it's negative 5 over 2 and a negative 3. It's midpoint. Right? Okay, so the second problem, we're going to use completing square trick to find the center and the radius. 3x squared minus 4x plus 3y squared plus 5y minus 1 is equal to 0. So first, we're going to move 1 to the right side. And here, 3x squared, 3y squared, we divide the equation by 3. Remember that x plus a quantity squared is x squared plus 2ax plus a squared. So we do need the coefficient a in the formula. So I have negative 2. 4 can be factored as 2 times 2. So we naturally have a factor 2. And this is a. This is supposed to be 2ax. 2ax. So you're going to add 2 over 3 squared. Remember, you add this y square here 5 over 3 both numbers or the numerator does not contain a factor of 2 so when we put coefficient of 2 we're going to divide it by 2 if you can factor out a factor 2 then you don't need to do the division but if you cannot factor out, get a factor 2 then you are going to do the division so 2 cancelled with a 2 from denominator you still have 5 over 3 and in this case this 5 over 6 is a uh, is the quantity a in the formula, 5 over 6 squared. Okay, so 1 plus, you see you add this term, so 2 over 3 squared, and you add this 5 over 6 squared, plus 5 over 6 squared. Be careful, sorry, 5 over 6 squared. Okay, so it's a 1 plus 2 over 3 quantity squared, plus 5 over 6 quantity squared. And then this becomes x minus 2 over 3 squared. This becomes y plus 5 over 6 squared. Here, it's a 1 plus 2 over 3 squared is 4 over 9. 5 over 6 squared is a 25 over 36. So it's a 36 over 36. It's a 16 over 36. And a 25 over 36. Continue the addition. Uh, what is it? It's a uh, 36, 16, it's a uh, 52, 25 is 77. Yes, 77. So, what is the center? The center is, be careful, it's supposed to be x minus h, y minus k. So, here you have a subtraction. So the x coordinate is 2 thirds, but this y coordinate of the center is negative 5 over 6. 
the radius is the radius is not 77 over square uh, over 36 is square root of 77 over over 36 okay be careful you must take the square root because the right side is r square is r square uh well i hope i don't make miss yeah i that's i feel i'm wrong here is one third it's already one third i copied it wrong one third here is one third then this is a 12. 12 so it's a 12. it's a 28. 28 plus it's a 53. It's supposed to be 53 over 36. I hope I don't make a mistake. Uh, 12, 28, 25, 53. It's a 53. 53 over 36. Or you can write like square root of 53 over 6. Okay. Sorry, my bad. Here is a one third, not a one. It's already one third. Oh, anyway, uh, forty one. Fifty three. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now it's correct. Fifty three. Okay. Problem two. Uh, problem three. We have two points, negative one, two, two, negative one. We're looking for the equation through those two points. We need the slope. Slope is a y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's check y2. Which one is y2? Assume this one is y2. The second number is y2. So negative one minus y1, two. x2, two minus x1, negative one. So negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. 2 minus negative 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. So it's negative 1. The slope is negative 1. Whenever you have slope, you can use either of the point to write the equation by the slope point form. All right? So it's a y. Assume we use the first one. y minus 2 is equal to negative 1 times x minus negative 1. You can simplify it. It's a negative x minus 1. So y is equal to negative x plus 1. Okay, this is the right one. You can leave it like this as slope point form, or you can write the simplified version. If you do not choose the first point, you choose the second point, it looks like this. y minus negative 1, y minus y coordinate is equal to negative x minus x coordinate. So it's y plus 1 is equal to negative x plus 2. So y is equal to negative x plus one the same answer they are equivalent so you can leave it like this correct this correct or this correct they are all correct okay uh, we are going to write the equation perpendicular to the given line perpendicular to the given line and through the point in one negative two so perpendicularity depend on the negative reciprocal. So first, let's try to find the reciprocal of the given equation, given line. So I move 5x to the right side. It becomes negative 5x plus 45. And then divide the equation by 9. Divide the equation by 9. I get the negative 5 over 9 times x plus 5. 45 over 9 is 5. So this slope is negative 5 over 9. Then the required line has a slope of negative reciprocal. Negative reciprocal is now about 5. So you flip it and cancel the negative sign. Okay, this is a slope. Once you have the slope, y minus y coordinate is equal to the slope x, times, uh, x minus x coordinate. This is a final answer, final correct answer. Don't copy problem wrong. All right, uh, problem five. We're looking for the x and y intercepts of uh, y squared plus six 
y is equal to x squared plus 6x plus 9. So x intercept, y is equal to 0. y is 0, y is 0. So it's a 0 equal to x squared plus 6x plus 9. 0 is equal to x plus 3 squared. So x is equal to negative 3. There's only one x intercept. Y intercept. Be careful about the computation. X equal to zero. X equal to zero. This is zero. This is zero. But nine is still nine. So it's y squared plus six y is equal to nine. So y squared plus six nine minus y is equal to zero. This is a quadratic equation again. Use the root formula. So y is a plus or minus uh two a negative b plus or minus square root of b square minus four a c. Right? 4ac. So it's negative 6 plus or minus square root of 72 over 2. So it's a negative 6 plus or minus. 72 is 36 times 2. 36, you move it forward. Outside of a square root, it's a 6. So it's a negative 2, oh, I'm sorry, over 2. Negative 6 over 2 is negative 3. 6 over 2 is 3. So you have two y-intercepts, so y could be negative 3 plus 3 root 2. y is negative 3 minus 3 over 2. Okay, plus or minus. Don't forget this 9, and don't forget the root formula. Problem 6, problem 6. Uh, we have a parabola. The directrix is y equal to 3, y equal to 3. The focus is 0, negative 3. Focus 0, negative 3. It's supposed to be like this. So it is x squared is equal. You see, it's a negative y direction. So it's negative 4ay. Negative y direction. It's negative y direction, negative 4ay. And a is 3. a is always a positive. a is not a negative. a is always positive. So here, this is negative. Negative 3 is negative a. So a is 3. So it's Check your textbook. Here, it's a is always a, the positive. Okay, problem seven. This is the answer. This is the answer. It it faces uh, the opening faces a negative y direction. So four negative four a y faces a negative x direction. It's going to be negative four a x. If uh, determine the domain of the function f x is the uh, fourth root of uh, negative two x squared plus two x. Fourth root, all the even root function requires a positive input, non-negative input. So you need you need it to be greater than or equal to zero. We divide two sides by negative two, where x squared minus x is less than or equal to zero. And x, x minus one, less than or equal to zero. So you have two solutions, x equal to zero, x equal to one. And this opening is upward. But you need the, the, uh, the region it's below the x-axis, less than zero. So the, the domain is zero, one, zero, one, closed. It could be zero. That's it. Uh, eight. We have function fx is equal to 2x squared minus x over 2. Part A is a point 1 half negative 2 thirds on the graph or not? Well, let's check. f of 1 half is 2 times 1 half squared minus 1 half over 2. 2 times 1, one half squared is 1 over 4 times 2 is a 1 half minus 1 half over 2 is 1 over 4. So it's 1 over 4. 
it's not equal to negative two thirds. So the point one half negative two thirds is not on the graph. It is on the graph, you know, if and only if the evaluation of the function at the x coordinate is equal to the y coordinate. Here it's not equal, so it's not. Uh, part B, let fx be 1. What is x? fx be 1, so you get a 2x squared minus x over 2 equal to 1. Multiply two sides by 2, so it's a 4x squared minus x is equal to 2. And move 2 to the left side, we have a 4x squared minus x minus 2 equal to 0. All right. Again, this is quadratic function. We use the root formula. x is in 2a, negative b, plus or minus b squared, minus 4ac. All right. So 1 plus or minus square root of what? 4 times 4, 16. 16 times 2, 32. Minus, minus, plus. 32 plus 1, 33. So you have two solutions. Well, they are, they are the value. They are the possible values of uh, x. X could be 1 plus root 33 over 8, or x could be 1 minus 30, uh, root 1 minus square root of 33 over 8. Uh, well, 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 hope I don't make mistake. Minus 2, minus x. Okay. Problem nine, change of the rate over one three. It's a four x. So the average change of the rate is equal to f three minus f one over three minus one. So you just compute f three is a two times uh, three squared minus four times three minus one over 2. So this, uh, uh, what is this? It's a 3 squared 9 times 2 is 18 minus 4 times 3 is uh, 12 minus negative 2. It's a 6. 6 minus 2 is 8. Minus negative 2 is 8. So it's a 4. So the average rate of change is 4. Problem 10. Problem 10, we're going to talk about the shift. Shift Translate four units down, okay. Original function. Trans four, uh, four units down. And uh, stretch co by coefficient of three. And that's it. Stretch by the coefficient of three means you have everything multiplied by three, not just the first term. 11, 11, we just change the shape. Assume you have a wire, you're going to form a, a circle. So the wire has a length x. When you fold it to be a circle, this is actually a circumference of a circle. Circle has radius r then the 2 pi r is circumference, supposed to be x. So r is x over 2 pi. And then we are going to talk about the area of the circle in terms of x. Area is pi r squared. r is x over 2 pi, so it's x pi times x over 2 pi quantity squared. So it's pi times x squared over 4 pi squared. You cancel pi. So you get x squared over 4 pi. This is the answer. That's it. Okay, so we finished the discussion. If you have any doubts or question, or if I make any mistake in the computation, please send me email and let me know. Okay? Thank you very much.